Hey, good morning, and I am excited because it's Friday. Yay, it's a wonderful day today, and I'm really looking forward to doing a lot of things over the weekend. But of course, if you know me, they're pretty much mostly about work. Good morning, everyone. I am Nancy Becker, and I'm the Chief Flying Pig Wrangler for Business Success Unlimited. It is the end of 2019 already. Where has this year gone? It it's amazing to me everything that has happened through the year, but how quickly the year has passed. And I have a suggestion before we talk about the things that I want to talk about today. I have a suggestion for you that you get out a piece of paper and a pen and think about, or you can type it on the computer, however works best for you. I'm old fashioned. I still like to write things down. So I get out a pen and paper and I think about everything that I have accomplished and everything that has happened throughout the first eight months of the year, nine months of the year. And you will see, I think, that you've done a lot more than you think you've done. While I'm talking about business, I think also you need to think about things that you've accomplished in your personal life. Because we all are not just a personal being or just a business being. We can't do one without the other. We're not robots. And so when you look at all the things that you've accomplished in your business, and you look at all the things that you've accomplished in your life, that can give you goosebumps. It, it does me, you know, because I think I, a lot of the things that I've accomplished over the year, I couldn't have done without being business or I couldn't have done without being personal. An example, I have wanted for years to go to Florida. I've never been to Florida. I've never been able to go to Florida. I never thought I would be able to go to Florida. Then all of a sudden in March, I get this email saying that there's going to be this podcasting conference in August, heaven forbid, in Florida. And I just knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was going to go to that conference. It was for my business because it was a way for me to enlarge on my knowledge and education on podcasting. It was a way for me to get to meet podcasters and to meet potential speakers and to see all the toys that we geeks love to look at like microphones and mixers and you know all the different things it was a way of learning how to better our podcasts through monetization through different topics i mean it was perfectly business no question asked it was it was a reason to go to florida for business but it also ticked off one of my boxes on my wish list, on my bucket list. I got to meet family of my husband that I'd never met before. We've talked on Facebook for years, but I've never met them personally. I got to meet them. We had a wonderful day together and had shared a wonderful meal and it was just exciting. I got some time on the way home to visit with my sister and brother-in-law. We had a nice visit. We were able to share a meal with them and saw beautiful scenery. We're in states that I've never been in before and was able to see the countryside, the city. We went through Atlanta. We went through Lexington and Louisville. 
we went through all these different places. Nashville absolutely saw gorgeous, you know, landmarks and places throughout the country that I've never been able to do before. That was exciting. And as a consequence, that benefited me both professionally and personally. That's only one of the many, many things that I've accomplished over this last year that if I was just sitting here thinking, oh, I haven't done anything this year. It's, you know, it's not been a very exciting year. But I look back on everything I've accomplished. I have figured out my target market. I have put together a roadmap for getting myself from point A to point B. I've been working with incredible clients. I've helped them see things that they may not have ever seen. It's just really important to start thinking about the things that you've accomplished. It's also important to think about the things that you wanted to accomplish that you haven't and that you need to think, does this make sense to do or not? Should I put it aside or should I see if I can do it or not? There's still a couple of months left in the year. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see if we can get these things done. So take a few minutes and sit down and write out everything that's been accomplished over the year. I think you'll really have some aha moments when you do that. So that's the first thing I wanted to share with you today. Second thing I want to share with you is what you should be doing moving forward. We are at the end of the year. We do only have a couple of months left. And as I just said, there's still time to work on things for this year. But what about next year? It's not too early to start thinking about next year. Because if you wait until January, you're going to have several months of planning and figuring out where you want to go and what you want to do that are going to put you behind. So realistically, you might not be starting your work for 2020. Yikes, that's hard to say, 2020. But it's it's going to be a couple of months before you can actually start seriously working on what you want to accomplish in 2020. But if you start thinking about that now, January 1st comes and you can hit the road running. You've already got everything in place so that you can start to work in your business and on your business. So I have a few things that you can start to work on now that are going to take you sturdily into 2020. The first thing you need to do, and everybody that knows me has heard this before, is you need to get a plan. It's time to sit down, take an hour or two, and think about you want what you want to accomplish next year. Where is it you want to go? What is it that you want to have by the end of the year? And, you know, how are you going to get there? It's an overall picture. It's just, I would like to have, you know, 50 new clients. Just think about where you see yourself at the end of next year. And then you need to create some goals. Put some hard numbers into everything you do. For me, <clears throat> I want to have, you know, a six-figure income. 
a multiple six-figure income by the end of next year. How am I going to do that? I need to talk to, I need to connect with at least 20 people a day. That can be through email, that can be through Facebook, that can be through LinkedIn. Networking in person, picking up the phone and talking to people. But I have to connect with at least 20 people a day, every day. And I don't mean when I say connecting, I don't mean, hi, I'm a business consultant and analyst, and I would like to work with you. I think I can help your business. You're going to hang up on me. You're going to delete that email. You're going to say, I'm not going to talk to that person. What you need to do is you need to start to create relationships. I saw a post that you had on Facebook yesterday, and it really meant a whole lot to me. I love what you're saying. I think that's so important. Let's talk about it. Would you would you like to hop on a call and, and you know, talk about whatever it was that was in that post? Create a relationship. Talk to people and say, hey, haven't talked to you in a while. What's going on for you these days? I'd love to catch up. You start to build a connection with people. And then eventually, if there's something that you do that can be of help to them, they're going to ask you and you can start to focus on business. But in the beginning, it's creating that relationship. It's finding out who the people are and what they're doing that's going to get you going forward. I just watched a show on TV this morning called Gordon Ramsay Unchained or something like that. It wasn't his normal television show. He actually went and spent a week in Morocco living with the Berber, who are the you know, who are the native people in Morocco. He learned about their cultures, he learned about their traditions, he learned about the food they ate. He then at the end of the week made them a meal. He was then able to take what he learned back to England and implemented those things in his restaurant. He was able to figure out what the people wanted, what they liked, what they didn't like, and he was able to use that to eventually grow his business. That's what you need to do too. Don't just jump in and say, hey, this is what I do, buy for me. So that's number one. Get that plan going. Make your goals, figure out what it is you want. Then you are also building your list. You are thinking about your best customers, your top prospects, and you're going to connect with them. You're going to talk to them. Like I just said, you're going to start to build that relationship again. And then you can also start thinking about what are the different events that go on throughout the year. And you can have a holiday party. You can have a barbecue. Every summer, I have a friends and family potluck at my house in June, where I invite all of my local clients, my family, my friends, my neighbors, everybody to come and just spend the day in my backyard where we have bonfires going, we roast s'mores, everybody brings something to share, and we just sit and talk. It eventually oftentimes turns to business because everybody's introducing each other, they're talking about what they do for a living, they, they're sharing, there's laughter, there's joy, there's excitement. You could do that. You can have a Christmas open house. You know, you can have a, one of my clients is getting ready to have a Beetlejuice photo shoot where she's decorated up the studio and 
all of these people are coming for her husband to take their pictures. They can be dressed in costume. They don't have to be. But Beetlejuice is going to be there, and they've got all sorts of, there's going to be a cauldron, you know, with with goodies coming out of it and everything under the sun to promote their business and to have new customers. So get creative as well. And then also, one of the last things that you need to do is look at what you're doing. Look at your goal sheet and your targets and your big picture. Where do you want to be at the end of the year? Review that on a regular basis. I would review it at a minimum quarterly, but for me, I review it monthly. And I'll say, well, you know, this didn't do real well. And, and oops, I said I was going to make 20 contacts a day here and you know this day I didn't do anything and so I need to you know catch up or it gives you the ability to look at what you're doing and then to judge whether or not it's working do you have to pivot do you have to make a change do you just keep on keeping on you know what are the things that are working and what aren't and so you can you can fix them you can change things you don't have to be so ground into what you said you're going to do that you're going to do it come hell or high water you know it you can you can make changes you can pivot you can do whatever is necessary but if you're not reviewing those numbers if you're not regularly looking at what it is you're doing you can't do that because you don't know whether it's working or not. So I would highly recommend that you start thinking about those things as well so that you can put them into place come the 1st of January. That's it, to guys. You know, that's it today. Um, not really a whole lot of work, but some thinking that needs to go into things and trying to get it all down, put it on paper, make sure that it all makes sense. And I can guarantee that if you do these things, your business is going to grow. With that, guys, get out there, have a wonderful weekend, be productive and soar higher. Talk to y'all real soon. Take care.